Do you need to create a project intake process in Smartsheet, perhaps even with a form that you can send out to stakeholders to raise project requests, perhaps even something like this? Well, in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you a highly effective project intake sheet and process that I have been leveraging in my organization for over seven years. Now, before I walk you through exactly what columns I've included and also how they've been set up optimally and then share the form with you, I do just want to quickly mention that this is a minimum viable product intake sheet. It may be that you need to create something a little bit more expansive. It may be that you want to set up some automations. It could even be that you want to leverage the control center in Smartsheet to help run this process for you. That being said, what I'm sharing with you right now, anyone can set up and start using within 15 minutes or so. So let us now walk through the project intake sheet. Again, bear in mind, you may want to adapt some of these columns to suit your own organization's needs. It could even be that you need to add new columns as well, depending on the projects that you need to run. Nevertheless, these are the columns and data points that typically work really best for this process. So the first is a project ID, and that just gives you and your admin team an idea as to what the project is, it's, it's a unique ID basically to refer back to at any point. So I've set this up, right click here, edit column properties. I've set this up as an auto number. So every time that the form is populated or every time that someone even goes into this underlying sheet and enters data, this will automatically populate. So it'll save you a little bit of time. Next, we have a project name. It's self-explanatory. Someone can basically give a high level overview of what the project is. Next, we have the project description, which I've set up as the primary column. Now, the primary column is typically used in Smartsheets to identify and describe each row in a sheet. So it makes most sense in the intake sheet to have the project description as the primary column. You don't have to have that necessarily, but it is useful if you're building out reports on this particular sheet. So here, the submitter can provide further information about the project. Next, we have project region. Now this is set up as a drop-down list. And we've got Americas, APAC, and EMEA. Um, yeah, as I say, it's a drop-down and that will appear on the form that I'm gonna sh show you shortly. Now, of course, you may not operate in these regions. You may you know, work in one region, or it may be that you work in different regions. You might even need a sub-region uh, column as well. But this is just an example of how this would typically work. We've then got internal or external project. Another drop down here, edit column properties, drop down external or internal are the options. Again, just helps get a little bit of clarity as to whether this is kind of client facing or an internal project. We've then got department or team. Now you can do this as a drop down. I've got this just as text number, but here the submitter can specify what department and team they work in. So it just helps you to get an understanding as to whether you should even go forward with the project. Do you work with this department and team? Is it something that uh, you should be undertaking. Next, we've got a field for the client name. So this is just dummy data as an example. Um, yeah, just make it available for the submitter to specify. We've got project request raised by. Uh, that is my name, but I've set this up as a contact list. Now we're going to set this up in a particular way on the form, uh, and this should be populated by default. So don't worry about that. We then have project request date. Again, this is uh, a date. Uh, but it's also, we've set this up in such a way that it's auto-populated um, on the specific date. So if I go edit column properties and I change this to um, created date as an example, then when the, when the request is submitted, this will auto-populate. We've then got planned project start date, really good information to capture. That is just a date column type. And then I've got the same here. It might actually make sense to have that as restricted to dates only. So if I show you that again, right click, edit column properties, date, restrict to dates only. We're both now on that. We've then got project type, and this gives us an idea as to what the project type is all around basically. And I've set this up as a drop down. So right click, edit column properties, drop down list. I've provided these values for the individual to select, but it may be that you need to adapt these to suit your needs. So as an example, I've put in consulting, services, on-site training and event. They are the options for the submitter. We've then got the expected project costs and I've put on some currency format on these. 
Um, so yeah, how much does the project expect to cost and what's the revenue expected from it? So here we can get a quick understanding as to whether the project is viable or even worth running altogether. Um, that can just help us to prioritize projects as well because we can focus on projects that have the highest return. We've then got project sponsor. So yeah, who signed off on this project? I've put in some dummy data here. Now, these three columns here, you'll notice, I'm actually gonna put this all the way down. I've put this in a background of gray. Now, the reason why I've done this is these columns are intended for us, the admin team, when it comes to receiving project intake requests. They're not gonna be on the form, but what they enable us to do is once we get a request to uh, undertake a certain action. So as an example, uh, we can specify, we can add a new project manager to that project. That's something the admin team will do, not the submitter. Um, and also we can give a status, you know, is it going to, is the, has the request been submitted? Have we approved it? Have we denied it? Here, I've also included project toolkit provisions. So what I'm saying here is, have we created a set of templates for the project manager to work on to run this project in our solution? Now, the final two columns are auto generated and basically, um, so this should be, uh, modified by, and this should be modified date. These will just tell us when was this row last accessed, changed, etc., and when what was the date for that. So I'm going to hit save, and that's going to pre-populate. Okay. So that is the underlying projecting date sheet. I now want to share with you the form. I've created this ahead of time. You could create it from scratch based on this underlying template. What I've done. Let me open it up. That's what it looks like. Let me go in the edit settings as well. So this is in the editor. Let me just walk you through how I've set this up. I've, I've made pretty much every field mandatory by default because we want to capture all of this information. Now to do that, you just select the specific field and hit required. Now you do have the option to hide. So what that would mean is if someone opened it up, they wouldn't see that field. But I actually just like to remove that field altogether if we're not running with it. And I'll show you that in a second. Now what you can also do against each one is you can put a label or some help text. So let's just say five words max. You get the idea. Just just give the individual um, perhaps some um, an idea as to what they need to include in that particular field. That's a bad example. Um, here you could say something like uh, advise on what the project outcome or goal is. You know, something like that. That That's what the help text is for. Now, I'll walk you through these in a second, actually. Um, what you can actually do, no, actually, while we're on the project description, is we can display this as a multi-line text box. So you have the choice of a single line or a multi-line and you can set the lines even larger. And that just gives the submitter um, a little bit of context as to how much information you're looking to obtain. So if you did this as an example, it looks like we want more information here. So that's a good best practice. You can also put a default value as well um, if you wanted to. So just show you if I put test, it will just appear on the form like this, but I'm not going to do that in this particular instance. We've got project region and that's the drop dropdown. Um, you'll see here display as, as drop dropdown. Um, you can do it as buttons as well, vertical or horizontal, whatever makes sense for you. I'm actually going to do horizontal because it keeps the form short and it also makes it very easy to populate. Then we've got internal external project. Again, I'm going to have this as horizontal radio buttons. Department team, we're going to leave this as is. Client name, leave this as is. Project um, request project request raised by. I'm going to hide this because we don't actually need this on the form. We've got this as a plan project start date. We can put default values if we wanted to. Um, we've got the project type and we could do horizontal buttons again. Just makes it easier than a drop down in my opinion to select. Est expected project cost expected project revenue, project sponsor. Now, the other thing I've done at the bottom is I've, enabled, I've put file upload. So if I took this off, then you just, let me just take it off. You just basically drag it to the bottom. And what that enables you to do, I've lost the, the text there. Um, but what that enables you to do is, you know, you could say something like, please, please provide any documentation that would support your project request or something like that. So that could be, I don't know, that could be the business case as an example. They could upload the business case here and you can have that required or not required. It depends on your, what you, what you kind of want to do. Now I, I should open this before I started making some changes in there. So this was the existing project intake sheet. Now you'll notice that some of these are set as drop downs. So here we go. And I changed them to radio buttons. So if I just save this up and then refresh, you'll see that the changes have now come in. So there we go. Now, at this point, let's just say you've created the sheet 
uh, the form, I should say. If you wanted to share it with anyone, you can click share form and it will give you this. We can send it as an email or we can just send them the link directly. That could be via our communication system of preference, whether that's Teams, you get the idea. Or alternatively, what I like to do sometimes is just get that link and then you can embed that in internal hub sites or wherever uh, you want to send that. You know, it could be that you have a particular relationship with a different team that was raising project requests and they can leverage this link as they see fit. Now, the other thing I want to mention is it depends on the account type that you have, but you can also customize how this looks. So as an example, we could change this to like a nice blue. We could put an image in here. This could be, instead of Smartsheet, it could say our organization as an example. So apply that. And then if we do this, it's obviously got blue. It's a good idea to uh, select maybe some some of the branding or the colors of your organization that would make more sense. And that's what I'd recommend. Now, the other thing I didn't really touch upon is the settings. So we've got how it kind of appears in terms of like, is it full screen? Is it on the side? Is it plain? You have those three different themes and brands to select. You can remove the Smartsheet branding on the footer. So that'd be this. Let me just take that off and I'll just save and hit go. That will remove that. Um, so if you want to do that, you can. This is some security options you can do. And then here's, this is important. You can change what happens when the form is submitted. So you can display a confirmation message. So here I've just changed this to success. We've captured your project request. Expect to hear back from our team in one to two business days, but you can also relay, reload the same link for another form entry. That may be useful if a team needs to raise lots of different project requests. You can also choose this option as well. I recommend bottom of the sheet. So when the when the form is populated, it all basically will roll up back into our underlying data sheet. And I'll show you that in a second. Um, but you want it to be at the bottom. I mean, it could be at the top. It depends how you want to operate. And then you can allow the submitter to, eat, to get a copy basically of what they've submitted. And you may want to change the email message. So thank you for submitting your project request. A copy is included below for your records. And then again, I've just specified that again. Expect to hear back from our team in one to two business days. Now you can put a capture on to reduce spam and you can do other things like that. But that is essentially the project intake sheet. Um, that's now in here. You can get the link from the link from here. You can open it up and you can also make a few other changes here. You can get an embed code if you wanted and put this on. Um, you know, you could put this on a dashboard if you wanted to in, in Smartsheet, or you could put this on an external hub site. You can also duplicate it and make a few subtle changes. You can also deactivate it as well if you didn't want to receive any more project requests. So that is essentially the project intake sheet and process. The other thing I would do is when you start getting, you know, project requests, I would then, this is when I'd start tapping into this. This is when as the admin users, I'd start, you know, maybe monitoring this sheet once a day, once a week, depends on how many project requests you're expecting. And this is when I'd start manipulating this thing. So let's just say this, these came in, um, this project came in, I'd go in as an example and I'd assign Lisa. So let's just say Lisa works in um, APAC. She, you know, she's the project manager for APAC. I could see that it came in a project request for a, an APAC project. I would then assign Lisa. And at this point I could set up a project toolkit for her. And once that's done, once I've created that, I could then go back in here and press yes. So you get the idea. That's how this essentially works. These gray ones are your admin processes off the back of the request. So as an example, the approval status, let's just say the project request came in and it's a project that we can't undertake at this precise moment, we could put denied. And then we could go and send some communication to the project requester. You know, we didn't receive the right information. It's not a project that we have the re resources for at this precise moment. You get the idea. If it's approved, that's when we can go and submit the uh, create the project toolkit. You get the idea on that. But these are just some processes that work from an admin perspective. I would suggest that you have an admin user or someone within your team monitoring this sheet and also kind of undertaking this process. And it's probably best that you only have one individual rather than several, or otherwise it can get a little bit blurred and a little bit messy. Now, the one other thing that you can do with this project intake request and sheet and process is you can set up auto archiving. So as an example, if you wanted to, you could auto you could auto archive different projects out of the sheet to stop this building up into a massive long list. And the way you could do that is you could set up auto archiving so that as an example, every time that a project toolkit has been provisioned, it gets removed from this sheet and into another one. So as an example, you could do something like um, you could it would be an automation. So you'd be basically, you'd be creating an automation from, from scratch. It could be something like, so the trigger would be when, when rows are changed and it'd be project toolkit provisions changes to yes, 
you want to where would it be move rows to another sheet and then you'd be moving it to you'd select a sheet and you could have something like project intake archive so that's a little automation you can set up it makes your life a little bit a little bit easier make sure you name it accordingly so auto auto archiving um projects that have been set up so you get the idea so that is essentially how i set up project intake sheets and processes in my organization as i say this is a minimum viable product you may need to expand this to suit your own needs it could be that you tap into the control center and have this kind of automated by default for you you know as project requests come in the projects are spun up on your behalf but this works really really well it's got all the columns that you're going to need i hope this video has been useful for you uh, any questions comments feedback drop them down below and with that said best of luck and i hope you have an excellent day